Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! Filthy goblins. How did they find their way in the cesspool? No signs to point the way, no roads to speak of. Ah, the wind will be my guide. Faithful breeze carry me from this abhorrent place. If I were to die here, what would become of the world? I have little doubt those fools will destroy it. Now that my master is gone, who is to stand in their way? Only me, I suppose. Master, you failed when you tried to keep their power. That was your mistake. To try to keep it for yourself. I seek to destroy their power before they destroy the world. Again. Of course, even the wind betrays me. Redundancies. Plans upon plans. More complex than even the passages that snake through these caverns. If one fails, there's one to take its place. That is how I will win. If I can just find the exit. I'm going to do a little intro, but I'm going to do it like I'm Chris Kelly, but I'm not. I'm Adrian. Are you ready? Yeah, let's, let's hear this. Fire swords are awesome. He's not wrong. <laughs> That's all I got. That's my whole impression. That was great. Fire swords are awesome. They keep popping up all over the place. So we decided to finally make a tutorial showing you how to make your own. You, you know, originally we wanted this to be a Hellboy tutorial, but then Hellboy came out and it was not good. You know, I didn't see it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. It's on Amazon <laughs> Prime now, so. Already, really? Yeah, yeah, I know. Wow. It's a bad sign. Anyway, so this is not a Hellboy tutorial. It's something else. <laughs> First step today is to go straight to footagecrate.com and find a flame to use as our fire sprite. Feel free to browse our extensive collection and find one that is going to work best for your shot. The one we're going with is called Looping Torch Flame Number 1. We shot this one recently and pretty soon we've got a video coming out which is all about filming fire and sparks. So if you're not subscribed yet, you might want to correct that. It sounds like an oversight to me. <laughs> Since this is a looping clip, let's give it some loops. Ooh. In the project window, right click on it, go to select interpret footage main and change the loop number from one to something else. 10 is plenty for us. That's easy enough to do for just one clip, but if you've got multiple clips you need to loop, you're gonna wanna use our free looper script. Launch that from the scripts menu and select all your clips and change the number of loops to whatever you want it to be. For us, it's still 10 and hit apply. Easy, easy, it's free, it's easy. Freezy. Fleazy. Yeah, fleazy. Fleazy. We're gonna drag this fire clip right here into a new comp so we can prep it for use with the fire sword. This is also gonna make it very easy to swap out later if that's something we want to do. The bottom half of this clip is looking kind of thin because that's the part where the actual torch was on fire. We aren't lighting a torch right now. We're making a dang fire sword. So fire we don't, sword! Fire sword! Fire sword! We don't need that. So let's mask it out and we'll feather it a little bit. Easy. Easy. Easy fleasy. Easy fleasy. We're also going to move this clip up in the comp so it's coming from the center. This way we won't have to move that anchor point later and we're done with the fire clip for now. Let's move on to the footage. Here we can see a mysterious figure revealing a sword. Wow. Her clothes are not exactly practical for this sort of activity, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. It's <laughs> <laughs> on fire. <laughs> We had a light on set that we tried to move around to match the movement of the sword. As always, <laughs> try and lighting succeeded. is good. Yeah. We need to track the base and the tip of the sword. The easiest way to do this is actually by hand because those aren't really strong tracking Don't points. Don't cut yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, be careful. If at any point you can't see the part you're trying to track because it's moving too fast, just guess where it should be. Same goes for if you're trying to track part of the sword that has moved off screen. Just guess and you'll be okay. You'll probably get it right. Next, we're gonna use a new script on Production Crate called Crate's Midpoint Null Script. Sounds this expensive. Script is gonna, no, 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 no. <laughs> it is free. It is free for everybody. Go download it right now. It is awesome. This script is gonna be very helpful for us when we want to find points along the sword where we can put some of those flames. This is pretty simple to use, but it is very, very powerful. Download it now. We're gonna go ahead and grab both of our tracked nulls. We're gonna select 2D midpoint because we track these in two dimensions. The control null checkboxes and the wiggle controls don't matter to us for this effect, so we're gonna leave them alone. Now we got to decide how many nulls we want. We want enough to cover the sword, but we don't want a ludicrous amount. Let's go with something <laughs> like 10 for now. Hit generate. You can immediately see what this does. It's basically you rebuilt our blade, but out of nulls, which it makes it a much more powerful blade now. <laughs> Each of these nulls has a bias percentage slider we can use to move it between the base and the tip. These numbers are automatically set to distribute the nulls evenly, but you can adjust them if you like and even animate them. But again, that is not necessary for this effect. Yeah, it's just a cool thing you can do. Now we can drag in our flame pre-comp we prepped earlier. We'll make a bunch of copies of it, one for each midpoint null, and shift parent each one to a null. Holding shift while you parent something causes the child layer to inherit all the transform values of the parent. Chances are these are gonna be too big, so we can grab all of them at once and scale them down. Feel free to go through and adjust the scale of each one if you want to add some more randomness, but uh, we didn't do that. You can add a taper if you want by grabbing either the base or the tip and scaling it a little bit and the midpoint nulls are all going to scale accordingly. You can rotate them too, but that's going to look a bit silly for a fire sword. It's just good to know. Yep. We'll also want to offset the timing of each flame so they don't all look the same. If we want to add some sort of core to the sword as well, we can use a taller flame clip like the 4K tall yellow flame number three, obviously, and we can add a solid composite effect to that and then throw on a couple of puppet pins. We'll use the puppet pin null generator script from Production Crate to convert those pins into nulls and then we'll parent those nulls to the base and the tip of the sword. It's very easy. A lot of words, very easy. True. The color isn't looking quite right, so let's pre-comp all of our flames and nulls together to correct that. We'll use a solid composite to make sure there's no alpha interfering with our coloring effects, and then let's just tint that so we can start from scratch. We're gonna add an exposure effect and bump, bump, bump it up. We're intentionally causing it to blow out a little bit here. The reason is we actually did shoot a real flame in in this space under these lights and that flame was almost pure white on camera. So we know that this actually is a realistic way to go. If you wanna go less bright in order to preserve some detail, that's fine as a stylistic choice. You do you, boo. Yeah, it's fine, but it's also wrong. <laughs> we'll use a CC toner to get our colors in and we're gonna use these eyedroppers to steal colors from the fire light bulbs we have in the background. These things are making our job real easy. Alternatively, you could have colored this with the curves, bumping up the red and green channels, or you could have use Video Copilot's VC Color Vibrance plugin. There's literally unlimited ways to do this. Uh, we're also gonna add a glow on top of all of that. Although, you know, the glow is a little more subtle than you might've guessed. Why do you seem so disgusted by this glow? <laughs> Let's add in some tracked heat distortion. That sounds cool, right? Or should I say warm? <laughs> Got him. Bring it back. <laughs> Do you guys, you remember? Okay. We'll make a new comp. We can bring in the footage as well and set it to a guide layer. This means that it won't render outside of this comp, but we can still use it for reference. This is gonna be our displacement map comp. Make a new solid and add the turbulent noise effect to it. We went with a dynamic fractal type. And as always, do not be afraid to really dive into the settings of this. Dive in, do it. We animated the offset turbulence to make the noise flow upwards and the evolution to make it a little bubbly. We're only gonna want this heat displacement to exist near the fire itself. So we can bring in a copy of the fire sword to use as a mask. Let's drop on our solid composite and our tint effects. We're also gonna add an echo. This will make it so that as the sword moves around, it's gonna leave kind of a trail of heat displacement in its wake. We can also bump up the exposure a lot because we don't need any detail in this. We basically just need a blob. We can blur it out as well 
well and tell her noise layer to use it as a luma mat. Let's also drop a 50% gray solid underneath everything and change the noise layer itself to a light and transfer mode. When we do start adding distortion, we only want it to distort up, not down since heat arises. And this light in mode makes it so there are no dark pixels, which would displace in the wrong direction. And it, they would displace in a creative direction. <laughs> duplicate this comp and we're gonna call the duplicate uh, heat comp. We're gonna use this to add some heat blur. The only change we need to make here is to change the gray solid to black. But having this as a separate comp is gonna give us freedom to have greater control over the blurred layer if we decide later on that we need it. Bring both of these new comps into your main comp and turn off their visibility. Go ahead and poke their eyes out. Ow. Make a new adjustment layer and label it heat displacement. Whenever we're displacing stuff, we usually want a motion tile effect on top to keep the edges from getting all messed up. Make sure to check the mirrored edge and turn up the output width and height a bit, not too much. Add the displacement map effect, select the displacement map layer as the source and turn up the vertical displacement until it looks good. Right about there. And then turn it down a little bit cause you went too far cause you have no self control. For the blur, you can use a camera lens blur effect. Select the heat map as your blur map and turn it up a bit. You can go into that heat map comp and mess with the brightness and contrast and stuff to really control the look of this blur. You can also move the blur effect to happen before the displacement as well if you want. This is gonna make it so your blurry parts still have some detail in them. It just depends on what looks best to you, man. And that's how the fire sword effect is done. If you wanna change up the look, just go back into the fire sprite comp we set up at the beginning and change the fire clip to something else. Now it looks totally different. Yours doesn't have to look like ours. It can be as unique as you are. Aww. Uh, right now I'm just recording fully for the fire sword tutorial. So there's a couple of elements of sound that are missing that weren't picked up by the mics, uh, which include her footsteps in the cave and the sound of the torches and the fire sword itself. So I have all that I need right here to get the full range of cave sounds. I'm gonna get- A bunch of garbage if you ask me. It's a bunch of garbage. Now right here I have uh, granulated sand. You can get something like this at your local craft store. Uh, since she's in a cave, it's probably really dirty and grimy, so I need some sort of nice crunch to the footsteps. So now it's time to record some torch sounds. In order to get that high frequency crackle, I'm going to start crushing these different plastics and hopefully when I layer them, they'll sound more like fire. Alright. That was really good. <laughs> that was actually pretty dope. Alright. Now for a little more crackle, but maybe not so high. If I were to die here, what would become of the world? I have little doubt those fools will destroy it. The last sound that's needed for fire is that kind of smoldering sound that you get at the base, that kind of like low rumble. And there's quite a few ways to do this. A lot of people use noise and they put it on a low pass filter and that's a great way to do it. I feel like it's a little too automated. I'm going to try doing it with my mouth and hopefully <laughs> putting a low pass on that in post will make it seem a lot more grumbly. This has been more of a short, simple Saturday morning tut than the huge. I abbreviated a lot of stuff there. Yeah, you're so cool, man. We hope you still learned a thing or two here. If you want to learn more about how we built the cave, check out the last tutorial, which was the uh, the cool Tesseract effect. If you want to know how we were able to get our candle flame to magically disappear, we just blew it out. It was really easy. We got it on the first try. First try. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop playing that. If you want to know how to do a different cool fire effect, why don't you check out the Motion Create script? We've got a video showing you how to use it to make a, a neat torch. That'll be linked up in the cards. Click the eye. Yeah. And uh, here's a tutorial I made a while ago. It's, you know, it's decent. Attractive mocha. It's got some tips. It's, re it's related to this. It's got a sword. Lastly, if you want to know how to look super cool, here's a quick mini tutorial. Just go to shop.productioncrate.com and get your merch! Get your merch! Get your merch! Get your merch!
I got mine. It's uh, shop.productioncrate.com. All right, Kratos, catch you on the fly. Catch you on the... Nobody's ever said that before. Yeah, it's a new... Stop playing that.